uh, welcome to Beginners Academy. Uh, we um, enjoy uh, or endeavor to help new and returning hams uh, get started in the hobby or restarted in the hobby. Uh, tonight we have a presentation on ARRL Field Day and it's entitled ARRL Field Day Beginner's Guide. Um, ARRL Field Day is the most popular on the air event held annually in the US and Canada. On the fourth weekend of June, more than 35,000 radio amateurs gather with their clubs, groups, or simply with friends to operate from remote locations. Let's see. Oops. All right, well, field day is always the fourth full weekend of June. And it um, uh, begins at uh, 1800 UTC, uh, which in the central time zone, I believe is uh, uh, one o'clock, 1 p.m. And um, if you set up before field day, you can only go to 1800 UTC Sunday. Uh, and that's generally, um, I think, what most people do. Uh, there are, uh, there's a little extra time if you wait to set up when field day starts. But by Sunday morning, most of us are, are, are ready to hang it up. <laughs> so, uh, but the uh, objective is to work as many stations as possible on the 160, 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10 meter HF bands, as well as all the bands 50 megahertz and above. And in doing so, to learn to operate in abnormal situations in less than optimal conditions. Um, a premium is placed on developing skills to meet the challenges of emergency preparedness, as well as to acquaint the general public with the capabilities of amateur radio. Well, uh, for myself uh, personally, I think it was 52 years ago that I did my first field day. So it's something I did as a teenager and I, it's, it's one of my favorite amateur radio activities. Well, before we go any further, uh, think safety first. So if you happen to be a mascus and want to, or whatever that word is and want to do it outdoors, uh, which is uh, what I like to do. Uh, of course, stay hydrated, take breaks and use sunscreen. Uh, keep your antennas well away from power lines. Uh, use safety techniques if climbing a tower. Have a medical emergency kit and uh, don't talk yourself into doing something dangerous. Uh, uh, we're kind of uh, usually trying to put up bigger and higher antennas, so so you've got to keep your head about it. And uh, if you have a group, you may want to have a safety point of contact. Well, um, uh, COVID has affected field day, uh, particularly for uh, clubs that want to operate as a group. Um, people uh, are remain returning to somewhat normal activity, although COVID is still out there. So some people may be operating as a group, just like pre-COVID. But it's a personal decision, so evaluate your own risk. And there is a new option since COVID that stations using their own call sign and location can have their scores aggregated for a club. And uh, uh, that's become a permanent part of the rules. Um, I mentioned a group activity. Um, traditionally, field day is 
the biggest event of the year for most clubs. Um, uh, so being a group, there's planning involved, uh, teamwork. Uh, there are lots of jobs to do and not all of them are operating. So some people uh, uh, like to uh, help set up the antennas. Uh, some people like to help out with the food. And um, so there's something to, for everybody to do. And it's a great opportunity for the operators and families to socialize. Uh, usually there's something good to eat. Um, some of the Panama City Club meter members recently, or the last few years have been camping at the same park using their own calls, but, but we still can socialize. <clears throat> and uh, that's what uh, I have planned for the upcoming field day. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, I'm a member of the Panama City Amateur Radio Club, uh, Panama City, Florida. Um, I'll just give you a brief uh, video clip of uh, a group field day at a uh, Bay County EOC. And so the video is uh, pretty interesting. Wh whoops. <laughs> well, uh, you won't be able to hear the sound. <laughs> Just narrate for us, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> this is everybody I know. <laughs> oh. uh, the antenna that they're putting up is a hex beam. <laughs> and it only took a few minutes, and there it was. <laughs> so... Bob KK4DIV took that time lapse video. So you can see things, things can actually be very simple or they can be very involved. Um, Field Day is also a public relations opportunity. And uh, um, you can, uh, if you have a group event, you can uh, invite the media to cover the event or do a story on it. Or, and um, uh, uh, clubs do this, and uh, we've had success doing it in Panama City. It got covered by uh, the uh, uh, TV station, and and usually on sun on Sunday, somebody had watched the news on Saturday and they show up. So uh, uh, it, it does help get the word out. And it gets out the reasons that we do the uh, field day, which, which include emergency preparedness, which <clears throat> um, is uh, in part because uh, you operate away, well, it's, it's an option to operate away from your usual station. So, and also operate without commercial power. Uh, there's also a bonus to originate messages um, and send it to your uh, section manager. So it has something in common with that with what Avery, Avery's A-R-E-S groups do. But it, it's not a formal exercise, so I call it informal. Well, uh, in amateur radio, there are many contests and field day is not a contest. But actually it is a contest, so that may be a little confusing. So ARRL says it is not a contest, but uh, if you submit a log, uh, your score will be listed with everybody else. So, and also the style of operating is uh, 
basically contesting. Of course, Parks on the Air is not a formal contest, but there's there, it has something in common with Parks on the Air, actually. So um, uh, field day can help build your operating skills. It turns out uh, many contesters had their first taste of contesting on field day. And after that, they were just totally into it and have done contesting the rest of their lives. So be careful. <laughs> you might get hooked. Um, field day is a great opportunity for new hams and prospects. Uh, a lot of people haven't been exposed, say they got their technician uh, license and they haven't been exposed to HF or high frequency. And uh, so it's a great opportunity to do that. Uh, most of the activities on HF, but not all of it. Uh, of course, you'll see ham radio in act. You'll see all the equipment, all the antennas. Uh, you can talk to the operators. And um, if you like, you can help log the contacts or and take a turn operating or, or, or both. And uh, so we'd love to have uh, new people kind of break the ice and field day is a great opportunity. So technicians or even non-hams can operate HF while super, supervised by a general or higher licensee. So <clears throat> don't be shy. <laughs> All right. Well, um, some folks like getting outdoors and I can say some don't. So field day is an opportunity to camp out and rough it, but uh, uh, others it's fine, would rather um, uh, be in a venue with air conditioning. So, so it varies with clubs. Some of them have activities in air conditioning and some of them have activities uh, outside. Uh, um, the ham in the picture there is Bob KK4DIV. He loves camping. Uh, I also do camping, so it's just a natural that we'll go maybe to a state park and operate field day. Of course, uh, antennas are usually the fun part or they are the most fun part, I think, of amateur radio. And um, so if you're gonna do your own setup, really um, any antenna that you can support <laughs> is worth a try. Um, and uh, you might have several antennas. And if you've been in this for a while, you'll say, well, I'm gonna have a bigger antenna than last year. So, so it makes it very interesting. And what antenna should you use? Well, any, like I said, any antenna is fair game uh, for HF. Uh, uh, most, well, most, uh, Operations are going to use wire antennas, but as you saw, you can bring a tower and, and put a hex beam on it or a Yagi. Um, I've used a 4020 fan dipole. Uh, it's a basic dipole with a second dipole tagged onto it in parallel. And 40 and 20 are the uh, kind of the go-to bands. And a the 40 meter part of the antenna will be about 66 feet long. And you can support it in the middle and let the ends uh, go down toward the ground and that's called an inverted V. So, <clears throat> um, but everybody's got their favorite antenna and uh, some antennas are multiband without a tuner. 
some are multiband with a tuner. We won't go into all those details. And these days, operating outdoors is very popular. So there's a lot of antennas you can buy, but the basic dipole you certainly can make yourself. Um, well, for power, uh, the ARRL uh, offers a bonus if you operate 100% emergency power, a bonus of 100 points. And uh, 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 I personally use batteries and uh, solar panels to help charge the batteries in the daytime. Uh, other operations may use a generator. So, uh, uh, you know, that's an interesting uh, aspect of field day. When I did my first field day, it was a club, but only the teenagers, my teenage friends showed up, a guy dropped off a generator and we had it to ourselves. So we, we, we really had some fun. But um, um, also, there is a natural power bonus. And I've got some YouTubes uh, with uh, using uh, uh, a, a foot crank generator to charge up a super capacitor and then operate a rig from that. So uh, that's also another bonus you can do. Well, um, the field day rules are online and you would be wise to read them if you'd like to participate. Of course, you can show up at a site without reading the rules, but uh, if you're going to operate or manage a field day, do your own field day, definitely invest some time with the rules. Uh, they have changed recently in that the max power is 100 watts. And uh, it used to be that home stations could only work stations that were in the field, but since COVID, uh, home stations can work other home st stations, basically everyone. So if you want to do field day from the comfort of your home, you can. And as mentioned before, uh, there's a club aggregate scoring. So you know, there may be a dozen or more Panama City hams that operate field day one way or the other. Well, they can put Panama, they can put Panama City ARC as their club and that score will get aggregated. So it's best to spell the club name out the same way each time. Uh, the same thing would be true of the Dotham Club here. So we've covered some, we will cover some of the basics of the rules, but there are details that, you, that you'll find in, in the actual rules document. Uh, and there are field day classes. So, um, all operations aren't the same and they go into these different classes and uh, class a is a portable station with three or more operators using 100 percent emergency power um <clears throat> so it could be a club or non-club group with three or more operators using a generator or a battery or batteries um Class A battery is the same thing, but only using five watts maximum. So what do you think about that, Chris? <laughs> oh, you're not going to go with me into saying that uh, <laughs> life's too short for QRP. I'll never say that again, well, Greg. <laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, operators get on there and go to town. Now, it helps to have a full-size antenna. Drumsticks. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but um, I wish... Uh, Taking her with you? 
I wish the ARRL would let you run 10 watts on sideband. Uh, five watts is kind of short. Yeah. Well, so we, you, we've experimented on Winterfield yeah. Day doing it both ways. Yeah. And, and with the multiplier you get by going QRP, it's almost 50-50, isn't it? Like, I don't think one is tremendously advantaged over the other, yeah. really. So you'll make less, well, you'll probably make less contacts. With, but you get more uh, points for them. So but you get more points. So yeah. yeah, it's the same. So <clears throat> it's a valid thing to do. Um, now, class B, a portable station with one or two operators. So uh, I'm going to operate in a state park. So I'll be a class B and um, uh uh, NZ2I is uh, scheduled to come be my second operator, and uh, we'll be using a battery power assisted by solar panels. And we haven't made the decision yet if we'll be QRP or 100 watts. Uh, if we go QRP, which is low power or very low power, uh, we could be in the Class B battery. All right. Well, uh, Class C is mobile stations. There's there's a place for everybody in here. Uh, class D, a home station on commercial power. So there, there'll be a lot of Class D stations out there. And some Class E, home station on emergency power. And last, uh, Class F, operation from an established emergency operations center, which the club in Panama City has done at the Bay County EOC in the past for two or three years. Where it is air conditioned. Where it is air conditioned, except <laughs> I set up outside because I wanted to suffer. So. <laughs> <laughs> A true martyr. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, you're not limited to one transmitter, although if you're on your own, you know, one operator is gonna have one transmitter, but but if you're in a group affair, uh, you could have two transmitters or really two stations. And there's one club that has, uh, I, I believe 20, what, uh, Whiskey 3 Atlantic Ocean, usually has about 20. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, or 16 or 20 stations. Now, the stations may interfere with each other uh, since they have to be within a thousand foot circle. So they go to some lengths to make sure that they don't interfere uh, too bad. And uh, uh, it turns out uh, that uh, at uh, Falling Water State Park, I think we'll have uh, three stations, but we're going to use our own call signs. So really, we're like a three alpha. <laughs> but yeah, W three <laughs> AO in in two thousand nineteen in my log was only fourteen active transmitters simultaneous. Okay. How do they do that? I don't know. I don't know. But they've had... There isn't 14 bad. Yeah. Well, I may have been a little on the high side for 20. Well, no, they might have been later on. This is back This is back three years ago. They're probably 20 yeah. now. Uh, that, that, was, <laughs> that was the effect of COVID. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, but uh, the number of transmitters is important for the exchange, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, the field day exchange. So you have all these stations on the air and um, for a contact, it's narrowed down to two stations and they uh, exchange some set information um, to be able to uh, play with this, uh, participate. You need to know your class and section. Um, uh, your class is the number of transmitters. Well, it's the number of transmitters and then the class, 
like we discussed, D was home. So your typical home station um, around Panama City is going to be uh, like one Delta, Northern Florida. Um, uh, for me, operating as a Class B, uh, I would be a one Bravo, Northern Florida, or NFL. Now, I'll warn you that I think I got some information incorrect about the Ontario section. What What is your section, Chris? No, it is Northern Ontario. And oh. uh, uh, it's uh, the letters are Oscar, November, November, yeah. Ontario North. We do things backwards. It's the, it's the French okay. influence on all our titles, as possible <laughs> to point out to you. Okay, Chris. Uh, CQ Field Day from November 4, Kilo Golf Lima. And I just come back, uh, VA3 ECO, I just shout it out. Uh, VA3 ECO, this is N4KGL. We are one Bravo, Northern Florida. QSL, I am one Delta, Northern Ontario. And then sometimes it's polite to say, comma, you know, Oscar, November, November, depending on well, if the guy, if you're, count, if you're talking to uh, that 14 station, then don't bother with that. But if you're, Talking to, you know, someone who sounds a little bit not totally comfortable, then throw in your uh, Oscar November, November as well. Right. And then I say uh, QSL, uh, you're one Delta Northern Ontario and good luck in uh, field day. But if I actually work, Chris, I would say, hey, Chris, this is so wonderful to hear you. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. It doesn't hurt to have a little chat. You know, like if you yeah. get someone with a booming signal, you can say, you know, you're like five, nine plus 20. What are you using there? And he'll say, oh, I'm using a vertical antenna over salt water. Oh, I got a buddy that yeah. does that in Florida. You know, like you, it's okay to chat a bit, not terribly long, but if you want to right. throw in 10 yeah. or 20 seconds of chit chat, there's, it's not so, like some of the contests, yeah. Well, some of the folks on there are contesters, <laughs> and they'll they'll keep it just the essential information. But yeah, they'll, they'll snub you pretty good. But yeah. some people will chat. But some people will chat, and yeah. uh, at the end, I could do CQ Field Day. This is in 4K GL, or I could say. N4KGL, QRZ, or QRZ N4KGL. Um, uh, QRZ means uh, who is calling me, and QSL means that you receive the information. Now, another scenario is that I call CQ Field Day, and there's like a dozen stations come back to me. Now, this is like a dream, <laughs> okay? But... Uh, uh, and they all go talk at the same time, and I I can't I can't distinguish anything. But but usually you can get a letter of two or some call sign, and then you'll say the station with um, uh, <clears throat> Oscar uh, come back or or the VA three come back. And, yeah, I like yeah. to pick out the last letters quite often because it's with my brain it seems to be easier to pick yeah. them up. And especially if you can get two last letters, you can say uh, ending in Gulf Lima. Right. You know? And then you know you're going to be, I mean, the chances of it being more than one guy is really slim. So, or even just ending in Lima, you're, it's 26 to one, you're going to get just one guy, right? So it's. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I have a hard time with my call sign. Like no one ever gets my call sign. KF seven MYF maybe because there's two F's that messes yeah. them up. Well, yeah. I just I just started just saying Mike Yankee Fox, and and they'll go, <laughs> who is that Yankee Fox come again? Like I didn't even say the first three because yeah. they're not going to get it anyway. So yeah. I'll yeah. just say Mike Yankee Fox. I told you start with Kentucky Fried Kentucky Seven. Kentucky Fried Seven, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like <Yeah>. that. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, uh, F's and S's, uh, there's some letters that are tough. And for my call, they, they usually miss the Lima, the last letter. Um, well, um, so uh, one scenario is called Hunt and Pounce. So you tune up and down the band and find people calling CQ 
and you call them and hope that they come back to you. Uh, <clears throat> when uh, things, well, things will be very busy, so don't feel too bad if you don't get through on the first try. On Siegel Sideband, it's real congested, but if you're persistent, you'll either get through or give up and go find somebody else. Uh, but actually, uh, on Sunday, everything slows down. Uh, it's, it, it's a lot easier on Sunday, less congested. Um, so, so you can do what's called hunt and pounce. That's what I just described. Or you can sit on one frequency and called CQ field day and, and people come back to you. And that's probably the most, if, if they come back and you get a string going, then that's a way to rack up a lot of points. But if you're just getting into this, you might do uh, uh, hunt, hunt and pounce. It's safer. It's yeah. less nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, but happiness it, is getting the runs. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, amateur radio runs. That's yeah. Right. Not the yeah. other run. Depends if Frank brings well, his uh, beans or not. Yeah. Yeah. On field day, you <laughs> could get you could get the runs. So, <laughs> so I know everybody has had this question. Can you operate digital modes? And um, uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> so, although I haven't done it, but maybe oh, uh, that's great. I'll try. Uh, you will. I'll, I'll do a little bit at the end if you want, Craig, on that. Yes, please. Sure. Yes, that'll be good because you can take advantage of what Chris says. So there's a few things to customize, and also. Uh, PSK 31, which has been around longer than FT8, uh, it's not as popular in general, but I'd say there'll be a lot of activity on PSK 31 during field day. Uh, so both of these modes involve uh, software and interfacing the computer to your radio, but Almost everybody does it these days. And uh, so it will take some set, maybe a little preparation before field date will, will be beneficial. All right. Um, it took a few years for field day for FT8 to become part of field day. So, Chris, can you do FT4? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and generally speaking, it's not become too accepted, but um, I would. Well, I'll, I'll talk about that after when I okay. do the FT8. I'll, I'll share a screen on that. All right. Okay. Well, it's not a contest, but. Well, actually, you don't have to treat it like a contest because it's not a contest. But, wow. <laughs> but if you're keeping score. <laughs> Uh, it's one point for uh, voice contacts and two points for CW or digital. Uh, CW is Morse code. I like to do that. Um, um, and I think <clears throat> you get more points for CW or, or digital because they want to uh, kind of reduce the congestion on the uh, voice segments of the band. Uh, so you'll add up all your points uh, for the QSOs and multiply that times the power multiplier. And there you can see the details. Uh, you can get a bigger multiplier with a QRP, essentially on battery of 5X. Uh, if you're not on battery, uh, I don't see any advantage to it. Uh, it's still a 2X multiplier. And uh, every, uh, if you run up to 100 watts or 100 watts and less, uh, it's 2x. And power over 100 watts is not allowed. So don't cheat. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll uh, discuss bonus points. So, 
So really, uh, uh, if you do all the bonuses, you may make more bonus points than you do QSO points, but possibly. It helps. Oh, there's one thing wrong with this picture, uh, but the point of this slide is that Alabama is a section, Georgia is a section, but Florida has three different sections, nor Northern Florida, West Central Florida, and South Florida. So, um, and they all have their official abbreviations, I guess. And uh, California is full of them, New York, so uh, California is full of it. Is that what you're saying? Yes, then? yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, but it makes it interesting. Uh, Hawaii, Guam, uh, various territories, Puerto Rico is included. And what's missing here is Canada. And uh, it's just not on this map, but AWRL has a list that you can download of all the um, uh, sections, and I recommend printing it out because you may hear one and say, well, you know, is that right? So you can check it against the list to see, you know, if there is such a thing like Western Washington or it's the California ones that are kind of weird. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes they'll use the words and not the letters, and you'll be struggling to figure out what yeah. to type in or yeah. vice versa. So it's, it's yeah. good to have that list. Yeah. You'll need to get it right. So, but now I won't, I, <laughs> I'm in Alabama now, but I'll be in Florida. So I'll be Northern Florida. All right. Well, <clears throat> bonus points. Well, uh, all of these do not apply to all the classes. Uh, some of them are oriented toward a group thing, like class A, uh, like an educational activity. Um, if you're just operating by yourself, you won't do an educational activity. But um, <clears throat> we won't go through every one of these, but... Um, Emergency power, it'd be 100 points. And, and satellite, uh, they only want you to make one, if you make any, just one satellite contact, but it'd be worth 100 points. And um, uh, uh, I'm just jumping around here, copying the uh, special CW field day bulletin on W1AW. I think they also do it in other forms, but uh, uh, there's messages. Well, this is why you might want to read the rules. Now, some people don't pay any attention to bonuses, but it's interesting to uh, do them. Uh, it's a little more effort. Um, I've mentioned earlier that I've done the natural power bonus using a foot cranked generator to charge supercapacitors. And I run a QRP rig on it and make five contact. Of course, I, I have to dupe somebody into uh, pedaling the generator. And uh, I've got some YouTubes on that. So, so, uh, <clears throat> uh, Clubs in particular, you know, may make it a goal to get as many bonus points as possible. So there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, could you back up one there, Greg? I got to yeah. point something out here. Okay. The third one down, uh, bonus points, copying the special CWF <coughs> bulletin, the field day bulletin. Uh, for those <coughs> who know CW, great. Uh, for myself who doesn't, it's also sent out on a schedule in PSK 31 and I believe in RTTY. And it's also given out on sideband if you can, and they do it real slow. So you can actually write down the words, even if you're not a good shorthand or yeah. so, so that is also, and it's not just CW, it's done uh, digitally and on phone. 
and it's uh it's kind of fun they they get they every year they switch it up and it's a little paragraph and, yeah and and they give you a little chart on what frequencies at what time and it's just kind of a fun thing to try to to try to do it is of course you have to remember to do it <laughs> there's such a flurry of activity at field day it and if you're in a public <laughs> place and a young kid walks by you just grab him that's 20 points yeah. right there well <laughs> yes it is but don't get arrested well <laughs> uh actually uh, uh anybody's fair game uh you know that's curious about what we're doing you know uh they'll get some exposure to amateur radio and um so we encourage that uh logging well it uh, used to be that if you did logging, it was on paper, and it was uh, quite involved. <laughs> so, uh, but things have changed with computers. But actually, logging is not required to operate in field day. But almost everyone that is seriously operating field day does log with a computer program. But if you just want to make a few contacts or if you're just not interested in keeping score, you don't have to keep a log. But uh, one thing that a log does is help you catch dupes before you call them. So if you're on 40 meters sideband and you worked uh, Whiskey 3 Atlantic Ocean, <clears throat> Uh, an hour ago, and you kind of forgot about it and called him again, he'll say, dupe, <laughs> because he's catching it in his log that you've yeah, already worked in. Rhymes with stoop. <laughs> so, uh, so more, another thing about yeah. logging is if, if you, if you want to just get your feet wet and just throw out some points, don't bother putting in a log. Or if you want to go further into it and do a log, Try to log everything. Like if you are logging, you, you kind of owe it to people to log them all because I think they get points against them if they're not found in a submitted log. But if you, uh, what I'm saying is it's either log them all or, or don't bother logging. And there's nothing wrong with not logging. Like I was just in a VHF contest yeah. this weekend and you were too, Greg. You're just throwing out points. You're not putting a log in for that, are you? No, but. I'm going to upload it to LOTW. That's oh yeah, yeah. But but you but, but you don't have different. to upload your log yeah. is what I'm saying. But yeah. it, but but if you uh, do it halfway through, if you start thinking about you're going to log it, then maybe do it next year with the log. Like uh, yeah. it's either kind of log or no log, and no log is fine. They they get no points against them if you don't submit any log. Yeah, just give them the point. That's fine. That's good. Yeah, I think the winter field day people are really particular about that. I'm not sure about eight of Yeah, I'm not sure if they yeah. penalize or not on this one. I'm yeah. not sure. Um, so if you do keep a log and submit your score before, well, before the due date. <laughs> it's usually about a month or so, isn't it? Yeah, but watch out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, like Greg I, I, I two in the morning. Day. <laughs> yeah, and I woke up and said, I didn't submit my score. <laughs> but anyway, should you submit a score, then you'll uh, your uh, score will be um, uh, on the ARRL website, I believe, and also uh, QST, uh, their magazine. And actually, a big advantage to submitting your score is you can help your club out. By doing the club aggregate. And what club are you going for this year then? Oh, Greg? man. I don't know. I'll, I'll toss have to, a coin at the end of the. I'll, I'll have to keep that a secret. And, okay. and that's fair. Well, I'll hold that decision. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. I don't know. Um, Okay, well, there's a lot of software programs out there, but uh, one that doesn't, that's easy and inexpensive 
is N3FJP field day log software. And search for that and um, uh, you'll be able to download it. Uh, it does cost about $9 just for field day, but you can pay, I don't know, Fifteen dollars and get all kinds of logs. So you can use that for day-to-day yeah. -day logging too, can't you, Greg? Or can you? Well, they have a general purpose log also. It's called AC AC log. Oh yeah, yeah, I've heard yeah, of that. yeah. All right, and over on the right is a screenshot where you can't see a lot of detail, but but you really have three field. Uh, I believe it's three fields to fill out uh, the call. Well, wait, yeah, the call, the class, and the section. So if I work, Chris, I'd put in VA3ECO, ONN, and then, uh, no, what would you be, Chris? Uh, yeah, that's know. right. VA3ECO, well, ONN, yeah. And I would be but, uh, one Bravo, I think. Yeah. The one Unless Bravo. I I might go on the boat this year. That would make me mobile <laughs> one Charlie. I don't know. I've got to decide that. <laughs> See what the weather's like that day. Yeah. So anyway, it's really a database. It keeps up with what you've put in and shows you what sections you've worked. And it helps you avoid dupes. And uh, it's wonderful software. And the fella, Scott, N3FJP, You'll probably work him on field day because he's out there every year. All right. Well, if you're interested in a group field day, it uh, the ARRL has a field day locator, and um, uh, so if you're out of town or whatever. You can see if there's a field day near you or you can shop around for field days. And you notice that there's a hole in Dothan and Panama City. And that's because they just haven't done anything yet. They haven't put anything. But the little dot on I-10 south of Dothan is, I put one in, so that's me. And, um, so we're going to talk about um, um, further about <clears throat> group field days. And um, so anyway, uh, search for field day locator or ARRL field day locator. And there's a map. Um, some people may be late putting in their information. And these are field days that are public that you can get to. If you're going to be operating in your home, they they recommend not putting your dot, your marker on there. So, <clears throat> all right. The bottom line is, this is field day, folks. D don't miss the fun. Uh, find a field day that you can join or visit, which is nice because you don't have to pack a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> unless you join it and you may want to bring your radio or do your own field day, uh, which can be similar to doing parks on the air. So you could go out to a park and um, operate, you know, for four or five hours or two or three hours. And um, uh, that would be perfectly fine. You get a great taste of doing field day. Or uh, you could operate field day from home, and then you'll be a one Delta or one Echo station. So, um, but uh, I, you know, I try to advertise this with all my friends. So I'm a little disappointed if they don't come out, <laughs> but because I have brought all the equipment out, <laughs> but. Uh, Nevertheless, um, uh, generally, you see a lot of your friends, they find out you're operating field day and they'll come by. Um, and I haven't mentioned, well, we did mention winter field day, 
Uh, obviously, June is a very hot and humid month, but if you don't like that, you can do winter field day, which is the last full weekend of January, and maybe it will go below freezing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can have one or the other. So I believe this is my last slide. And uh, before we start with Chris, are there any questions about what we've covered? And um, so this just is a, just the a basic. comment. I'm glad that yes. you put the find a field day thing. I didn't think about that, but because I'll be here in Little Creek, I'm missing well, yet another field day because of travel. Well, you don't have to miss the field day. But I just found on that link yes. a uh, radio amateur society of Norfolk, and I see where they're going to be. So yeah, maybe I'll go out to the park and yeah. meet up. Yeah, with even them. if you don't have equipment, they'd love to have another body. Yeah, I brought my my icom and i have a couple of handhelds so i can try to make some local contacts and yeah i can hit some people at least yeah great idea scott well that's that's great actually i do have a couple more slides um well uh this is a pan panoramic panoramic view of campsite five at falling water state park <laughs> So it's a it's a, a pull through campsite, and uh, this is my setup a few years back. So I uh, rented a a uh, travel trailer. Uh, you see that over on the left. Uh, further to the right, there is a tent. Uh, that's where the radios. There's a table in there, radios and chairs and everything and um, uh, then I've got a support for an antenna there's a tripod uh, those are called camo poles well the reason I like campsite five is it's next to an open field and I use an in-fed antenna that's 130 feet long. So it starts in the campsite and goes out in the field. And if you look to the right, there's uh, two or three poles out there that support the antenna. So, so I'm, I'm the one that grabs campsite five. Now, uh, Bob KK4DIV will be somewhere else in Falling Waters and uh, Daniel will, will also be there. So, but um, <clears throat> uh, anybody is welcome to come by. Uh, anybody is welcome to come by. Uh, uh, I should have room for parking. I can't handle a hundred people coming by, <laughs> but usually a hundred people don't show up. So uh, parking probably won't be a problem. And then my next slide. Well, since ah, the new weapon. we're really, a, even though we're not officially a three transmitter operation, we are a three transmitter <laughs> operation. So um, uh, to make it convenient, I have uh, uh, three, filters, uh, three filters, one for 80, one for 40, one for 20. And it's wired up in this box with two switches such that I can um, select a, a, a bandpass filter uh, without unhooking coax. And, uh, and then there's a fourth option of just straight through for the other bands. So the theory is that this will keep the energy from my transmitter in the band and it will reduce the harmonics and, and, and hash or anything else that my transmitter may produce uh, because the filter, the little silver boxes um, will only pass one band like 40 meters. Um, and on the flip side, if somebody, um, is transmitting while I'm receiving, then if they're on a different band, it should 
help uh, keep any interference from their uh, transmission. But the problem is <laughs> that if you're a multi-transmitter, you have to coordinate or it's helpful to coordinate and be on different bands. <laughs> so, so if somebody's on the same band with me, these filters won't help. Okay, well, uh, that's just a little option I added and I'll, I'll test out at this field day. You, and I want to warn you, don't do what Greg does. You don't have to have these filters <laughs> and switches to operate field day. It's just something I'd like to try out. Okay, any question about the filter box? All right. Well, with is that- Is it grounded? Do you have to ground it so it has a place to filter out and send all the um, incorrect frequencies to? Well, I don't think so. No, I, I, think, they're, I think they're dissipated as heat in the silver boxes. That's why they're in little ventilated boxes and stuff. If your radio is doing a good job, there shouldn't be a whole lot of spurious stuff that it has to deal with. Really? It, it's yeah. more important on the receive side. So that if Bob, you know, KK4 DIV is on 15 meters and Greg's on 20, <clears throat> it's close enough wow. that Bob will be desensitizing or basically wiping out Greg's signal. Whereas with this box, and if he yeah. dials into his 20 meter bandpass, then, then Bob's signal will not bother Greg so much. Yeah. Now there's some rigs that produce extraneous noise <laughs> uh, uh actually the yezu well i don't want to make anybody mad but <laughs> there's one rig that's particularly bad but it's usually not an issue <laughs> uh and it's not the 991 so don't worry <laughs> is it the 857 no it's the 891 <laughs> oh yeah because uh, i it, i've gone beside you with the 857 yeah it's called uh phase noise and uh, uh uh, it's pretty bad with phase noise, but also another factor with this is that software, def well, direct sampled uh, 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 receivers like you have in the ICOM 7300, it's really sampling everything. <laughs> so if you can have a filter, uh, there's less influence. Uh, if you had a really, really strong signal, it may affect it even though it's out of band. So uh, that, th it should help if you're using that kind of transceiver. The newfangled ones, there's a little slight downside to the new ones. So I could use an ICOM 7100 that is not direct sample. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, with this, we'll uh, turn it over to Chris and um, he can share. Yeah, I'll just do a, a quick chat yeah. about, uh, you cannot start. Oh. Yeah. And uh, welcome, Chad. <laughs> there we go. Good to see all of you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna blow up WSJT to be bigger. <clears throat> so summer field day, FT8 is allowed, and FT4 and any of the WSJT modes. On winter field day, it's not. And their logic is, as you can see, these messages coming on the screen are pretty cryptic. They've got CQ call sign grid. That's it. Winter field day has an exchange that has not been incorporated into this software, nor does the winter field day people want it to be because they felt that ham radio, if you can't say, you know, the Titanic is sinking, then it's not really true ham radio. And that, that's a valid point. And I, you know, I'm not going to go with that, you know, philosophy or, or debate right now, but the summer field day people figure it's okay. So what's happened is they've incorporated their exchange into the software and to find it, it's under file, settings, advanced, and then right here is special operating activity. You check the box, 
you know, see these are all grayed out as soon as i click on that box now they're not grayed out and there is arr field day click that and that's where you put in your exchange that greg was talking about one d o n n or one b if i was out in a tent and um this is another thing for rtty but basically you just fill in that box say okay and it goes into that mode i'm going to do that right now i'm not going to transmit <clears throat> and you see a little red flag comes up here we're in field day <laughs> mode now now something else that came up on my other screen that you guys didn't see i'm going to drag it over to so you guys can see it is this thing popped up too <clears throat> it's its own contest log now that's full up from this this uh, vhf contest that happened this weekend i haven't cleared it yet but that'll come up with no contacts in it. As you make contacts in this digital mode, it'll start filling up. I got uh, I got 68. How many did you get this weekend, Greg? Oh, more like 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you were you were on a whip and I was on a beam, so I think you win. Anyways, um, that's that's basically it, guys. This is now ready to run for field day. And you can take the, the log that this generates, called a Cabrillo log, and you can export that into your other logging software. Uh, you can actually, uh, you can copy paste it into the other one and just uh, append it. There's all kinds of ways to, it's just a text log. The, that little log is, is, a, is a called Cabrillo. It's just a type of text log with a certain header on it. It's nothing special. So that's, that's WSJT software. Now we were talking about the mode. FT8 is by far going to be the most popular. Uh, why we're giving out two points for this, uh, same as CW, I don't think that's right. I think it should be two for CW, one for single sideband, and a half a point for FT8, really, what it should be. But I think two points. Uh, FT4, uh, I just switched over to it. And I'm going to minimize that. And now let's see. So this at the bottom of this waterfall is FT8. And now I go at the top of there is FT4. And you can see there's nobody there. So FT8 is, is more popular, but FT4 is twice as fast. So do, if you are going digital with this software, WSJT software, check out your FT4 now and then and just make sure that because if it starts hopping, it, it really goes quick. Uh, I was on one field day and Joe Taylor himself, the inventor of WSJT is a weak signal Joe Taylor. Joe came on FT4 on 20 meters and boy, you should have seen the people flooding over there to, to try to make a contact with this famous guy. It was quite amazing to watch on the screen. But that's, uh, that's FT8, FT4. Uh, heck, if you're up early in the morning, MSK 144. Oh, it's not happy with that. Okay, you can't do that for field day. Anyways, uh, there's a couple of modes there that are that are doable on field day. So that's it. Um, you know, while I'm here, let's talk about. I'm going to shut this down. Windlink. Uh, anyone set up for that or have interest in the Aries part of the Windlink? That's RF and I'm killing it. Yeah. <laughs> so your message to the station manager can be done with a WinLink email message and he does not even have to reply. Uh, oh no, it's giving me an egg screen. Remind me later. Here we go. So there's WinLink right there. So it's got to be done over HF. You cannot use a Telnet station. You got to do a, a Vera HF wind link or a packet like you guys have down there and find out the email address of your wind link station manager. It usually be his call sign. Uh, that'll go to automatically at windlink.org. And then if you, that's a hundred points right there. And then you can call 10 other people who've got wind link, uh, even if they haven't got it on. And you get 10 points for each of those. So that's 200 points for making 11 WinLink messages going out of your station. And for proof, all they want is the sent log. 
which is here. And they just want a picture of that to prove that you sent it to these people. The, and and in, in my email, when I do that, I say, hey, guys, you don't even have to reply to this. This is just for field day. And I just said it. Sometimes they come back and say, oh, way to go and stuff. But uh, uh, that's, that's WinLink. Yeah. There's another interesting digital thing that gets you some points. And it's kind of fun, too. And it also, you know, in a disaster, that might be an important skill to have is being able to send an email. Quite often, I'll pick up a station down in Texas or Ohio to send an email to my section manager who's in another part of Ontario through HF. So any questions on any of that? Yeah, keep rubbing it in, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> hey, Chris. Yeah. This is Ken. One thing that you might want to point out on the uh, files that you're going to send in, well, b before you get started working field, uh, you need to uh, block off or, or some kind of way uh, get, get a isolated file so that when you create the Cabrillo file, that it's just field day and not everything else that you've been doing for the Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, let me go back to that software, to what Ken's talking about. And I'm gonna go back to share screen again. I'm gonna blow this up. So what Ken's talking about is reset the Cabrillo log before you start. Like if I did field day right now and I've got 68 contacts from in June, it's going to be a mess. So you, you export that Cabrillo log somewhere else for my June thing, my VHF contest. And then I reset it and empty it down to zero. So there's nothing there and then start again. Now there's another log called the, uh, um, the ADI. Yeah, just the ADI log, WSJT underscore log ADI. You could use that one as well or instead of. Um, I like to let that one run permanently because that way I can contact, I can see a grid that I've never worked before because it shows up in that special color because I set it up in the colors that way. <clears throat> but some people will erase that log and use that for their contest. But I, 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 I do the Cabrillo for contest and the ADI I leave alone. I let it run continuously. Your choice on how to set it. But Ken's right. Whichever way you do it, whichever log you're picking, reset it morning of or the night before so that you're starting with a fresh slate for that contest. Thank, thanks for that, Ken. Okay. Well, I uh, have a, a few more comments. Um, uh, uh, the... Uh, Wiregrass Amateur Radio Club will be doing a group field day. I can't quote you the details, but uh, I believe they'll be operating from a school. So uh, <clears throat> the rigs will be in an air-conditioned uh, space. Uh, that's what I picked up. Uh, do you have anything else on that, Ken? No, I don't. I don't know any more than you do. Yeah. That's uh, that. My last understanding, though, that would be yeah. over at that school uh, where we've been before. Okay. Uh, the Panama City Club, I haven't heard uh, what their plans are, but they usually let uh, Marv, the vice president, KK4DKT, uh, head that up. Uh, <clears throat> So if they don't do anything else, they'll probably have something going on at the clubhouse. But I don't know if they made any announcements yet <clears throat> or emails, but you can look for that. But um, also, um, I mentioned that uh, uh, three of us will be operating from Falling Water State Park. Uh, so uh, you're welcome to come up there. I'm in campsite five. There'll be a sign out front. <laughs> uh, 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 welcome to field day or whatever. And, uh, but uh, <clears throat> uh, it's, there are a lot of opportunities. And if you can't find a, 
opportunity that matches, well, just make your own opportunity. And I got uh, one final bit of advice. Uh, if you haven't uh, gotten married yet, be careful about getting married on field day. <laughs> if you're a ham. Uh, now, if you're... If your uh, spouse or <laughs> is a ham, then don't worry about it because you can go out to field day for your anniversary. <laughs> so I, I guess said, that works out for Charlie and I because it is our anniversary on. The get team. out! <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, uh, let's see, twenty-eight years. Oh, well, congratulations! You know what? Mine's pretty darn close to that too. I think. They took their vows over CB. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what day we got married. We usually don't do much for our. Yeah. Well, I'm teasing a little bit, but but uh, I usually uh, give that advice. But you know, June's popular for weddings, so 